Powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. Now, live from inside the Matt Black Kia Studios, it's Football at Four. Football at Four is powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. It is brought to you by Bet365. Whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary at Bet365. Andrew DeCecco is here from InsideTheBirds.com. As we look at the Eagles and the Seahawks, what are some of the matchups that he is looking up? What are some of the things that he thinks needs to be fixed after two straight weeks, Andrew, of really bad football by the Philadelphia Eagles? Offensively, haven't been able to move the ball into the end zone. Now, we can get into that because we did talk about this a little bit yesterday. They actually did move the ball against Dallas. They just fumbled three times. They actually ran 22 less plays than Dallas did, but only got outgained by 70 yards in the game. So I'll ask you, when you're watching this team, do they have an offensive problem, or were those fumbles really the root of the problem? Well, in general, Mike, they have an offensive identity problem, and good to be with you. But um, but I think in, in the case of Sunday night, I mean, what, what more would you like Brian Johnson to do? On that first drive, Jalen Hurts completes a 14-yard pass to Dallas Goddard, bringing them to the seven-yard line. An offensive pass interference penalty on A.J. Brown brings the play back. That was the third penalty of that drive. And then, of course, we know that J1 fumbles on the next play. A.J. Brown drops a pass that he catches, you know, ten times over at the two-yard line, which in the Eagles had to settle for a field goal on the, on the, the ensuing drive. Devontae Smith drops a pass. Both Devontae and A.J. fumble. I mean, there were opportunities to add more points to the board and it would have looked a lot different perhaps at the end of the day. But um, I think in general, you'd like to see a little bit more creativity from the offense, a little bit more flow, maybe some motion, some more creativity from our route uh, in terms of route concepts. But on Sunday night, I thought that the plays were there to be made. Just the Eagles didn't get the, the performance that they needed to out of their star players. Um, by the way, the injury report for uh, today came out. It's Zach Cunningham, DNP, with a knee injury. Cam Jurgens with a peck. Toral injury, DNP, and Darius Slay with that knee, DNP. Uh, so that's for the people out there. Uh, I'll give you a quick update. Reed Blankenship limited with that concussion. Um, yeah, I mean, offensively, they had those turnovers. So when you watch back to that game, a lot of people panic, you know, we're too predictable. Um, you know, you've heard it all this week. Do you not feel as bad about where this offense is after kind of taking a step back? Yeah, I mean, offensively, I always feel like in the Eagles, from the Eagles' perspective, it has the best chance of getting back on track, and there's not really a cause for concern given the plethora of playmakers that they have, the offensive line that they have. There's just a left talent there. They should be able to manufacture points and go back to the drawing board and correct some things. Like I said, there's three penalties on the first drive alone. They have to clean things up from a discipline standpoint and ball security standpoint. And they should be all right in that area. Obviously, Brian Johnson took full accountability from his from his uh, perspective, and and I think that you're going to see him implement some new wrinkles. Perhaps sometimes you need that wake up call. But defensively, Mike is where the really where the Eagles should have a, a cause for concern because there's no reinforcements coming, and a lot of it could be, in my opinion, is personnel related. All right, uh, we'll get into that defense right now because uh, you look at where this defense is, and it looks like it's all over the place. You say it's personnel-related. Is it more personnel? Uh, A lot of people always like to go to the coaching and the coordinators. Do you look at the coaches, coordinators, the scheme they're running, or do you think this is more they just don't have the talent? Well, I think the easy answer is always to to blame the coaching staff, right? But – and while they are partly to blame, to be clear, I think a lot of it is personnel related. Uh, Sean Desai has, for most of the season, especially looking at that Miami game where they completely shut down the Dolphins, he was looked at as a guy, as a coach who made the most of what he had given the injury situation. He was known as someone who made adjustments at halftime, and the defense looked a lot different in the second half. And it only took a couple uh, of bumps in the road for a lot of folks to seemingly turn on him now he does need to be a lot better and be a little bit more creative we talked about brian johnson sean the side needs to be able to get more out of the players that he has i mean there's all pros former all pros on that defense so you should be able to be able to conjure some sort of productivity from a defensive standpoint and the eagles just haven't gotten enough out of it that being said the defense looks slow sluggish 
The, they're not making tackles. They're not flowing to the football. And when you look at it, like from those, in those terms, I mean, what is Sean Desai supposed to do when plays are, are when plays are there to be made and they're not being made? I can recall a play where Sidney Brown had to come across in center field. James Bradbury got beaten cleanly off the line by CeeDee Lamb. CeeDee Lamb didn't even do anything overly creative at the line of scrimmage. He just ran right past them. I mean, Kevin Byard in that first drive, he had a chance to wrap up Tony Pollard, and, and Tony Pollard eludes him, and he gets 11 yards on that play. Nicholas Morrow got completely sealed up by Tony Pollard on that end around from Cavante Turpin. Like, like these, the, you know, the players have to help themselves a little bit too. Yeah, that Turpin play I thought was uh, one that really showed the lack of speed and athleticism in that secondary there. Um, let's talk about this game and what we're talking about here. So when you look at what they've got, um, you know, C.D. Lamb is really good. They've got Cooks. He's a good receiver. Gallup, obviously. Ferguson, nice player. Uh, D.K. Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, mm-hmm. uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba. They present a much different type of challenge for this secondary. So how do they match up? Oh, this is going to be an interesting matchup because historically Darius Slay has struggled with DK Metcalf in particular, but, you know, bigger bodied physical receivers that are really good with body control and positioning and can make those contested catches tend to have success going against Slay or they can, they tend to at least give him fits. Bradbury struggles with speedier receivers. So, and, and shiftier guys. So Tyler Lockett to me, it's going to be a very vital player and a key matchup in this game, watching whoever draws him in coverage. And Jackson Smith and Jigba working the inside is going to be a, a matchup nightmare for whoever draws that assignment, whether it be Bradley Roby, Eli Ricks. I, I, he's just uh, a dynamic player who really has yet to break out, and this sort of sets up for an opportunity for him to really break out, knowing that the other two players in Lockett and Metcalf may draw a lot of attention there. So, I mean, this is really not a good matchup for a defensive backfield that's sort of reeling right now. So I don't really know what the Eagles are going to be able to do to mask some of their deficiencies and block that up but and cover that up. But, I mean, they're going to have to figure something out, whether that's implementing a little bit more Sidney Brown, who I love his energy, I love his physicality. Sometimes getting those fresh legs and energy and speed in there can sort of help mix things up a little bit, whether it's implementing Keely Ringo a little bit more who is a uh, solid tackler, has good speed, and is sort of getting his legs under him, hasn't played a lot of football. You have to fight. You, the personnel is the personnel, and you have to kind of shake things up if you're decided to mix and match and see where you're going to find the most success. Um, interesting. You mentioned Ringo. Nolan Smith's name came up. Uh, there are two younger players. We talked about the lack of speed. Uh, Sean Desai kind of hinted at that those guys might be earning more time. I'll ask you, as a guy who studies the draft, knows these younger players, should the Eagles start to think about turning to some of those younger players more? More, but, but you know, anyone suggesting that a rookie should be starting over, say, James Bradbury or Sidney Brown should be starting over Kevin Byard, when you have four games in front of you that you really need to, I mean, you would ideally like to see, see the Eagles sweep. I don't know that this is the, the point in the season where you should be implementing uh, and giving the lion's share of the snaps to younger players. I thought the opportunity to do that would have been earlier when, earlier in the season against the Commanders, against some, you know, the, the Vikings, and, and sort of get them their opportunities there. So when you're throwing them in now, they're not completely raw, and they're not fi- trying to find their sea legs. But I do think that you need to add some speed, some fresh legs, some energy to get, to get the guys I mean, to sort of mix in, because right now it doesn't look like the Eagles have. They look a little lethargic. Like, they're sort of laboring a little bit. They've logged a ton of snaps. But there's a lot of veterans, a lot of 30-plus players on that defense, and they, they just don't seem to have the same burst that we've grown accustomed to seeing out of that Eagles defense. So there are sometimes there are some plays to be made, and it just seems like players like Byard and Bradbury. Slay's been pretty good, but the, the linebackers at the second level, they're just not making plays. The pass rush looks a little lethargic. They're not being able to get home when they need them to. They're asking a lot out of Hassan Reddick and Josh Sweat. They're logging a ton of snaps, which is why I think you're going to see a little bit more Nolan Smith down the stretch here a little bit. Uh, let's get into that because the Eagles' bread and butter on defense, Andrew DiCecco, is getting to the quarterback. They cause pressure. They cause havoc. But they haven't been doing that in these two games, and there's other games. I mean, we go to Washington. That's a game you remember, hey, you should really dominate up front. I saw a stat this week, ESPN Stats and Info gave us, that said they're 29th in the league in pressure percentage. Um, we think of this team as a great 
uh, up front defense with, with pass rush. That hasn't been the case. But is Seattle a game where they should be able to disrupt and maybe make up for some of the problems you just discussed on the back end this week? Yeah, they should. But <clears throat> we looked at offensive lines, Mike, like the Commanders, like Jets, and other matchups that on paper they should have been able Jets to Jets is another thrive. good one. Yeah, Jets is another good one. They should have been able to thrive in those matchups, and you and I have talked about those very matchups, about how I thought that the Eagles had a clear advantage there, and I thought they were going to be able to exploit it, but it just never came to fruition. So for whatever reason, teams are looking now to counter what the Eagles are doing, and you're seeing a lot of tired legs, and like I said, a lot of these bigger linemen are logging a ton of snaps, and when you don't have the necessary depth behind them, there's not a, there's not a ton. They're trying to limit Brandon, Gra- Brandon Graham's snaps this year, and then and they had Derek Barnett, and he wasn't really playing much. And Nolan Smith isn't really playing that much. So you're asking a ton out of Hassan Reddick and Josh Sweat, and you know you're, you're relying uh, on on Fletcher Cox and um, and, and uh, Jalen Carter, a rookie. You, you you have to wonder if maybe his uh, he's sort of gone a little. I don't want to say radio silent, but it's been a little bit quiet on, on the Jalen Carter front. Normally, this is the time in the in the college football season where things are winding down. So you wonder if maybe there's a rookie wall thing coming into effect there. So I just don't know that they're, they're as deep there as they are, as they had been in past years. So I just don't know that the, that the burst is there when they really need it. Yeah, I, I'm, Nolan Smith's an interesting guy. I think, um, you know, first-round pick hasn't made much of an impact. Uh, is there a way they can use him more? Are they using him the right way? Do you like the way they're using him? Are they using him enough? I know there was a lot there, but I guess the gist of it is, can they get more pass rush from a guy they drafted in the first round and are barely using? Well, I like the way they used him last week. I, I, I kind of wish that they would – I really like Nolan Smith coming out. So, selfishly, I wish they would have played him more because he's a really fun player to watch when he's being able to, to kind of pin his ears back and bear down on quarterbacks. And I think that's really the best way to use him right now. He, he has a, a specific skill set. He's bendy. He's athletic. He has really good uh, speed – closing closing speed coming off the edge so you like to see them just take advantage of it and let him try to because he hasn't played a ton of snaps so he is going to be more fresh than some of those other guys that they're rolling out there so I think as we get down this is like a really good part in the season to rely on someone like Noah Smith or Sidney Brown because they're facing uh, inferior opponents and you don't necessarily you're not you're not playing the 49ers or the Cowboys so get get them some snaps because in the playoffs you're going to need these guys and you don't want their first experience where you're relying on them to be in the postseason. So I think they need to continue to just roll him out there, have him rush the passer. I don't know that you want to over, you can give him too much responsibility and coverage. I don't think that's what he's best adept at doing. But uh, but definitely there's, there certainly needs to be a role for him uh, at this point in the season. All right. Uh, if you're looking at the Eagles' offense, they've been struggling. But is this the kind of defense that you can get right on, specifically, I would think, too, maybe in the run game? <clears throat> Um, as far as stopping the run? No, we're flipping over to the offense now. This offense needs to get going. we got to get this offense off the ground. Uh, yeah, but is yeah. this a game where, you know, you go back to the Tampa Bay game where they just said, you know what, let's just run this team off the field. Uh, sure. I feel like this is the kind of team that you might be able to do. I know they went out and got uh, Leonard Williams, but th- there was a clear indication that they struggle stopping the run over there too. Yeah, perhaps the most alarming thing, and I wrote this in my observations in my piece for InsideTheBirds.com, is that for the past two weeks, the Eagles have been dominated in the line, in, the, in both lines, in the trenches, which is where they really invest heavily, and I thought that was really uncharacteristic. So I think this is a good spot for them to redefine their identity and, and play some bully ball and establish the run and, and, and re, you know, reaffirm that they have the best offensive line in football and, and maybe gain a little bit of confidence as, as we move further into the season here and take advantage of this matchup. I mean, the, the Seahawks have, have uh, in recent years, been a team that I, I didn't view as overly physical in the trenches, so you should be able to kind of get some downhill running game going. Um, they're, they're decent on the perimeter, so I, I would just try and hammer it between the tackles with Swift and Gamewell, a, a set a tone, and establish a tempo for the game, and I think that that should help the offense get right and, and sort of uh, turn this thing back, get this thing right and, uh, and get going from there. All right, uh, Andrew DeCecco, Football at Four from InsideTheBirds.com. Uh, I'll tell you what, you know, you look at Seattle, felt like the game out of that brutal stretch of games, but in your mind, um, 
it's just a dangerous spot for Philadelphia, having to go on the road Monday night. You know, they haven't beat the Seahawks since 2008, uh, having to go out there. This felt like the game that kind of you took, I don't want to say take your foot off the gas a little bit, but how important is this spot for, for the Eagles in the way this season feels like where it is right now? Well, it's really, it's really important for them to hit that reset button and, and, and really recenter because the postseason's just four weeks away and they need to be able to <clears> – you shouldn't be trying to find your stride at this point in the season. You should have an identity. You should know who you are. So I think that if you're the Eagles, you can say and do all the right things, right? But inevitably you're going to be pressing because you're coming off two wins to two losses in which you got, you got pretty much embarrassed. And now you're facing a Seattle team that has a pretty good set of receivers. And that trip, making that trip over there, Mike, is never, never an easy one. Um, that extra day of rest should help uh, in hindsight. But I, I think that there might be a little bit of pressure on the Eagles in trying to uh, almost trying to overcorrect and prove to themselves and also to, to, to the league that, that they are the, uh, the class in the, of the NFL and they're a force to be reckoned with. So they're going to have to go there focused because uh, I, I don't love the matchup from a passing game standpoint um, from a, uh, as far as the Eagles trying to contend with that. But um, they're going to have to find a way to shorten the game, in my opinion, and get out of there with a win. All right. Uh, for more, follow Andrew DiCecco and, of course, uh, the Inside the Birds podcast at InsideTheBirds.com and, of course, Football at Four right here on the Sports Bash Live on 97.3 ESPN. All right, buddy, we'll talk to you next week. You bet. Take care.